Greetings, everyone. This is going to kick off a new portion of the channel relegated to building a cordwood cabin. This project has been underway for us since last summer, and we will cover the hows and whys of cordwood, along with plenty of good old-fashioned grunt work. So we will let this episode stand as a baseline or the groundwork for the series. But hey, speaking of groundwork, let's roll right into it. Our groundwork began in August of 22. We trucked in approximately 38 yards of gravel, compacted it down, dug footers to the bedrock, and set concrete piers. Then we proceeded to pour 12.6 yards of concrete. And when I say pour, we're not talking about ready mix from the back of a truck. This was mixed by hand on property in a cement mixing drum. We bought a pallet of Portland cement, rock, and sand. It totaled out to be 258 loads out of the drum concrete mixer. It took us 11 days to complete. And once the concrete was complete, it was time to move into posts and beams. We are sourcing all of the lumber from our property. So the pieces we deemed worthy of posts and beams, we brought to the sawmill. The rest we cut to our wall length, which is 18 inches. We treated the posts and started the build. It is a multifaceted structure. So when we first began, we tried to address one wall at a time. This was a nice method to cut our teeth with, having never done this before. But after the wall was concluded, we deemed that we did not like the slumping effect from building too high too soon. So the alternative was to build one layer around the entire structure and build upwards. The medium here is lime putty mortar. It is slaked hydrated lime, soaked for at least 48 hours, mixed and mixed in ratio with screened sand. Having poured so much concrete, to switch to mixing lime putty mortar had quite the learning curve. But nonetheless, we were able to figure it out and are happy with the ratio we use now. The fall brought unexpected heavy rains, so we rushed to cover the walls and took the downtime to source more trees. And we were quickly reminded that the best time to pill a tree is in the spring and summer. We can easily pill many trees in those months. In the fall and winter, however, it can take an entire day to peel a tree. Generally, sawdust is used in between the walls for insulation, and we do manufacture quite a bit with the sawmill. However, we have access to, to a peat bog, so for not much money, we can get a truckload of sphagnum peat moss, which is antimicrobial, antibacterial, prohibits fungal growth, and with moisture can help retard the cure for the lime putty mortar so it does not hasten to cure in the sun and impose a risk of cracking. Inevitably, the seasons began to change on us. We started getting a little bit of rain, so we chose to cover the walls and work as much as possible. The lime putty mortar needs three weeks of no freezing temperatures to cure and no wind. So at our best estimation, we worked until the middle of November, which was unseasonably warm, and were able to stop at the end of November and had plenty of time for the cure to set in before the winter did. So we bundled up the walls and shoveled the snow as it came. 
and I am happy to report that the concrete and the mortar mix made it through the winter intact. And this is where we pick up now. We have begun sourcing wood for the summer of 2023 and we'll begin building this in installments. We will consider this an episode zero just for a baseline and a background.